I love that more Americans are starting to buy things that are secondhand. I, I think that's the right way to go. I'm I, a big I, proponent of this. I knew you'd love this story. It's so good. So the Washington Post had a piece this week that I absolutely loved because it talked about the statistics behind how Americans are shopping. And look, there's a dark side to this because I think due to inflation and due to the economic conditions that Americans are living under, they feel like they have no choice but to save money by resorting to various apps that allow for them to buy secondhand products, whether it's clothing, video games, whatever. I mean, you could buy anything secondhand these days and there are wonderful apps that make it far easier to do so. But there's a positive benefit to this that's even bigger than how much money you could save. And it has to do with sustainability, it has to do with you know, less waste. And through your behavior, essentially doing something that could be beneficial for the planet, right? Now, I don't believe that all of the onus should be placed on the individual when it comes to combating climate change. However, if you can save money and do something that's far more sustainable for the planet, I think this is a good way to do it. So let's talk about it. So in this piece, they write that in the past year, roughly half of Americans have bought used clothing. And that's according to Global Data, a market research firm, a figure that's expected to rise. And again, I'm a huge proponent of this, especially when it comes to buying clothing. One of the things I like to do, and I, it's a little bit of a life hack. I like to go to the store. I like to go to clothing stores that are far too expensive for me. Try on the clothing. I like the clothing, but I'm not going to buy retail. So then I go on Poshmark and I look for the exact same dress and usually I could find it for a lot cheaper. Ugh. Sometimes I could find it brand new. There's a lot of rich people out there who love to go buy things, never wear it. And then they're like, I don't know, and they put it up on Poshmark. I buy it there brand new for like half the price, sometimes even less than that. Yeah, so first of all, I didn't know you were a hacker, okay? Cuz you life hacker. you yeah. hacked the bejesus out of that life hack, okay? <laughs> yes. uh, that makes a lot of sense. And for women, I think this makes even more sense cuz a lot of times dresses are worn just a couple of times, especially if they're fancy dresses. I mean, how many occasions do you have to wear them, right? right. So, there'll be a bunch of dresses in the closet that people have wear, worn one to three times. Big deal, right? There's obviously a giant range of used and there are some used clothes you do not want. But a lot of this stuff, no one's ever worn because of the return policies. Mm -hmm. So we can get into that too. Yes. Like here, I'll give you some of the stats. So it turns out at the stores, 8% of the stuff is returned. Okay, well, you know, maybe they tried it on once, but that's it. And online, 20% of the stuff is returned. But when it's online and clothing, 40% are returned. Mm -hmm. So that means that probably at most it's been worn once. Now, look, it might there might be a reason they returned it, right? Maybe it didn't fit. It didn't fit, right. but but maybe it didn't fit because of that person. Maybe it didn't fit because it's the wrong size. I got you, but overall, I mean, you're gonna give me a giant discount on something that was worn once mm -hmm. and I could wash, and you already washed, presumably, I hope, right? Uh, maybe. But by the way, like you can wash it. That's why I have no problem buying secondhand clothing. Mm -hmm. It's not like I don't have a the ability to wash it and wear it. And it does as long as it's in good condition. It doesn't have holes in it or something like that. I mean, it's a big win. So let me give you some more info on this. So U.S. retailers churn out a record five trillion dollars in new goods each year. And that's according to the National Research Retail Federation. At the same time, the surge in e-commerce is flooding the market with unsold inventory, returns and secondhand items. So one of the things that I also love is places like TJ Maxx, right? Like all of the excess inventory, I think it gets sold by those types of stores like the you know, Nordstrom racks, the Marshalls, Ross, TJ Maxx, also some stuff that's like slightly defective. It'll be all right. No one's gonna check the hem on your dress yeah. shirt. Um, except Jenk, I feel like you gotta be a little more careful. You gotta be <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I'm a disaster anyway, you cut it. But it's funny you say that because what I was gonna say is, you know, I used to do the old school version of this. Uh, we'd go to Marshalls and we'd buy the irregulars, <laughs> right? And you'd look through all the irregulars and be like, oh, I found one that fits, mom. Okay, so that's some old school stuff right there.
this newfangled way of doing it. Love it. So let's go to graphic five. In America alone, an estimated 11.3 million tons of textile waste end up in landfills on a yearly basis. That's equivalent to approximately 81.5 pounds per person per year and around 2,150 pieces per second country wide. So I say that because you could cut down on that waste, especially that textile waste, if you, number one, forego fast fashion. And instead, if you're gonna buy new clothing, invest in good quality clothing that tends to be a little more classic, less trendy, right? Trends go out of style real quick. And if you're into fast fashion, the quality is not gonna be there. You're gonna spend money, it's gonna be cheaper, but it'll fall apart quickly and that increases the textile waste that we're talking about here. By 2030, we are expected to be discarding more than 134 million tons of textiles a year. Jesus, man, we are so incredibly so wasteful. wasteful. Like we've got to find way more ways to take advantage of the of this stuff that's left over. This is just the tip of the iceberg of what we could do. We've told you stories before where uh, sometimes they'll have t-shirts and hats and everything ready for both sides in a Super Bowl if they win because they put them on right away after the Super Bowl. That's how people figure it out. So when um, the team loses, they send it to, a lot of times to Latin American countries. So there'll be all these hilarious wrong Super Bowl winner merchandise all over Latin America. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious, right? <laughs> so like, hey, in, in Honduras, the Eagles might have won the Super Bowl. <laughs> Last time around, but hey, you know what? That's wonderful. That's getting good use out of perfectly good clothing, and that's the point here. Let's do way more of this. Absolutely, and globally, the fashion industry is responsible for 10% of all greenhouse gas emissions with textile production alone, estimated to release 1.2 billion tons of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere every year. Vast amounts of water are also needed to produce the clothes we wear. And the fashion industry is responsible for 20% of global waste water. So look, again, I, I am not one of those people who wants to shame others and their personal behavior and how it contributes to climate change. However, if you're looking for, I think, a relatively easy and beneficial and cost effective way to both help the environment and also save money. I think this is a good way to do it. So I just wanna fast forward to some of the sites that you can go to if you're interested in trying this out. Of course, there's eBay. I just bought a sweater off eBay the other day. I wore like a cute little poodle sweater this week. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bought that on eBay. Huh. Um, Poshmark is my personal favorite. There's also uh, Depop, which unfortunately was just bought by Etsy. So there's a lot of crossover there. I like it when you have separate platforms that sell separate things, but nonetheless, and then there's ThreadUp as well. Okay, so uh, by the way, none of those are sponsors, just- No, they're not. Just, uh, just doing a public service there. And also I wanna help you guys out if you're interested in trying this, so. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, so really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.